the music. <laughs> music is such you, a buzzword sometimes. While, while it started out um, in your early Santa Clara days, um, in a sophisticated way, the single most asked about show that I hear about mm. is 84. Mm. And in particular, in terms of your choice uh, with the percussion feature, um, from a composition standpoint, from an approach, your motivation, all of that, undoubtedly, like I said, uh, asked more about that. If you, it, you know, how did Ralph do that? Why did he do that? Where where did all that idea come from? So tell us a little bit about oh, that. Oh man, it's a conglomeration of a lot of ideas. I'll tell you this that I don't tell too many people. We had a lot of people in '73 exit out of our drum line. And there's reasons for that. We went other places, but I'm not gonna go into details about individuals or anything. Had a lot of people exit, so I lost a lot of talent. And so it put me in a position like, I gotta do something extra special to capture kids and coming back, because if I don't manage this right, this could be the end of the Dynasty Santa Clara great drum lines. And this was in 1983 three going in 84. So it was like, I gotta pick something special. I don't have the players, but I still have to, I gotta bring something even fresher to the table because there's always a, the idea of bringing something fresh. You know, with the Vanguard name and all that stuff I was talking about earlier. So, so I'm looking for fresh ideas and we happened to be playing this piece. We're premiering it in a really fine wind ensemble when I was going to University of Oregon. And it's called Musica Boema. We were premiering it at the University of Oregon. We had a really um, fine wind ensemble, great woodwind players, just all around a great group. And uh, Sednik Lucas is the composer's name, and he's from out there someplace. But the, the chart just grabbed me, man. It was just the, the mode that it was in. It was one of the, a very attractive mode, meaning Syrian, Lydian, you know, the different musical modes that we have. So I was starting to get into modal stuff too back then, you know, in college, good old college. But it was an attractive mode. The piece, this, I think it was the second movement that I used, it had a lot of drones in it, you know, which is kind of, for me, it's kind of hypnotic and it reminds me of, drones remind me of bagpipes. You know, as, as I look in music, you hear something that goes, and then next thing you want is the lead guy coming in to be as basic as you can be, you know. I mean, it, it, it had drones in it, and I was listening, you know, I was so attracted to the piece, then it dawned on me, this is something maybe I could use for Santa Clara. Plus, nobody's did a pianissimo drum solo and I could actually maybe get away with that maybe because of this whole classical SEV thing so I went for it and the drones they sounded like bagpipes so I said well then I'm gonna put some Scottish stuff in here and the piece sounded like it was in three and a lot of people don't know it was actually in two four okay because it went beam boom boom beam boom 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 beam but it was uh -huh. written in 2-4. And it was one section, a little xylophone section, that played in 2-4 for just a minute, which really put all the gears together of that piece. There's this little cymbal ride thing, a little tinkly thing over here, and a little timpani. There's like two against four stuff going on, and it was just delicious for me. Light and kind, fun ear candy. And so, uh, that was really the, the whole inspiration, that piece, Musica Boema. And of course, back then, we weren't dealing properly with contracts and stuff like that, you know, until some people got on the case, but we kind of just wrote anything we wanted back in the day, and nobody cared about, you know, um, rights and this and that. So I was very lucky, because you can't do any of that right now. But, um, so it was a pianissimo piece, a percussion feature in drum chord. It's soft. What? I'm going, all right, that's cool. So these, these concepts start, started coming together, but they were just based off of coolness of the drones of this piece, reminding me of this. It's pianissimo. So and that's cool. And maybe the activity would like this kind of thing. So 
there was a, a lot of light touching. The whole piece was at, it was supposed to be at P, two P's and one P, and then one mezzo forte accent in the whole piece, just to have one of those sforzando attack. Boom! But uh, the dynamic, uh, it was so hard that we had to raise all the dynamic levels up another level. So instead of two P's, we, our, our lows were at uh, one P. And instead of the one gawk being at mezzo forte, it was at forte. You know, but it was still very, very attractive. It was really difficult. I was so adamant about doing this piece because I had it. It was so locked. And I was just going to the drill guys. I don't know what you're going to do with this, but I can tell you, you know, you can do 3-4, you can do 2-4. And, but I got to do this, so please, you know. And Gail Royer was cool. He goes, ah, that's a pretty nice piece, you know. And so the, the drill guys got together and figured something out. But the, today it's still my favorite piece. Didn't have the, the talent that I wish we would have had to really pull it off the way I want it. But it still worked. The idea came off, and it became like one of those percussion features that uh, everybody really enjoyed. And we're I, still getting asked about it today. Yeah. So I think mainly because it was a soft percussion feature, a drum solo, which mm -hmm. was kind of out of context of what we did. What was the beginning of the season like? So you know, uh, <laughs> first first experiences from maybe your colleagues, you know, your 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 competitors, <laughs> your adjudicators. What, what, what was the buzz? Well, here's the buzz. I'm trying to think. What year did, uh, because it was in parallels with Tom Hanneman and I were really pushing each other secretly a lot because I was West Coast, he was East Coast. But Garfield was classical, kind of like Santa Clara, but different, but classical. So yeah. we had these things going on. <clears throat> and um, so I remember later on he was doing Star. And they did a P pianissimo percussion feature too. Remember, it was bar talk. Oh, sure. Yeah. Boom, okay. Boom, 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 bing. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember. I think I did mine first, but he really liked it in his version, and I was jealous because I liked his version better than mine. <laughs> and I was going, "That's what I really wanted." Kind of. I wanted to be that clean. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted it to be in time properly because we were kind of wobbly a little bit. But, you know, that's what we, him and I used to do. And we'd always talk about it. We'd feed off of each other's uh, programs that stimulated us to do whatever our thing was even more so. And so we kind of really boosted each other quite a bit. And, of course, Tom Float being another colleague and a guy that was, we raised ourselves together in the Anaheim Kingsman. I went to Santa Clara, he went to Blue Devils, and then there's uh, Jim out, Jim over in Kentucky. Campbell. Campbell. He was starting some things, he was with the guardsmen, so there was all these, you know, still the key people doing these drum lines like when I was growing up. There was, this guy does that, and this guy, you know, there's Larry McCormick over here, and there's, what's his name, they used to do Boston Crusaders back in the day, famous people. Shelmer, Jerry Shelmer. Yes, yeah. you see what I mean? Yeah. Those kind of guys were all, all, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, we were kind of one of those guys, and it became more important for, from an educational standpoint that, uh, that we take the helm and make sure that we brought fresh stuff to the table. So, I don't know if that's going to be enough for everybody about the soft drum solo, but it was a really hard thing to tackle. As, as we all know, it's difficult to play soft for long periods of times. It doesn't matter what you're playing. Mm -hmm. For those of you guys in college or in high school getting ready to do juries, you know what I'm talking about. When Maestro says he wants a pin and some more roll in front of everybody in the faculty, he's not kidding. And that's hard to do. Any instrument, triangle, any instrument. So for me, it was just a chance to bring something like that to the activity to explore more dynamic levels and listen to the sounds that the instruments produce outside playing at those dynamic levels. Well, and I think our activity, even this many years later, are, is still saying thank you for doing that because you, you opened uh, a new way of looking and listening. Well, it was really important for me personally, and I didn't mean to, you know, I was. I was hoping it was going to do something for the activity, but this was a private thing for me 
with that vanguard name that I had mentioned earlier, or what it represented, and what I assumed that's what everybody was doing, because we were pretty innovative, and they were innovative when I competed against them. And so I wanted to keep doing that, and that was my motivation to uh, treat the uh, Paying, paying audience and young kids to something that was a little bit different. That was a lot of the motivation. Um, and everybody did that. Everybody thought their stuff was different. It's just like I, I had a out because I had a, I was doing a classical group so I could make something a little bit more. There was an identity that was set already is what I'm saying. Does that make sense? But even though you were quote, a classical guy. Yeah. You were far more than that because you started to implement other instruments other you know, from other uh, cultures, other other musical genres. Yeah. Not too many people have tried to make the steel pan work in drum corps. Especially a classical group yeah. making it work for drum corps. That, was, that was rebellious. I was being rebellious. A little there. rebellious? Yeah, yeah in um, 1983 when we did that, uh, the piece, I named it We Don't Care because there was some meaning behind that. Nobody's gonna force us to do anything, you know. It's like, so my job as a percussion teacher is to introduce as much as I could from a percussion standpoint, because I used to play all those instruments. I was fascinated with all the tra trap instruments and different hand drums, uh, you know, different metallic sounds. And we just started bringing, you know, arm glocking and you know, uh, steel drums and, you know, this kind, you know, like the, what was that thing called that we found, the weed thing? I found it in the dirt one day. Oh, right, right. The little thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually found out walk in the dirt and I was looking garden at it. Garden like, weasel. What is garden weasel, yeah, yeah and I picked it up and it had dirt on it and I went to shake it off and it went Yeah, kind of And cool. I went, I meant that. <laughs> this is going in. I had little instruments from Japan, little bells and little kid rattler <clears throat> toys that were really cool. And I just, I wanted, you know, because some people were doing that. Um, and it was a great opportunity for the students as well. As I understand from, from some of your guys telling me, is in the early 80s, when, when the guys were required to live in town, that was a thing back in that yes. time, is that it, they, you weren't letting them just hang and, and hack. You wanted them studying other elements of music. They had to study percussion music literature that was not rudimental, that they uh, small ensembles, um, they had to learn uh, more music so that yes. they could bring a, a, a more rounded approach or a more musical approach to, their, to mm -hmm. their playing. We used to have these things called cultural concerts in Santa Clara, once a month. It was a wine and cheese thing for locals. And we'd play anything except for marching percussion. Mm -hmm. At the end of the gig, we would do, you know, the family thing. But it was required, so there was marimba solos, and I'd have people coming up from the uh, San Francisco Symphony would come up and coach these guys, because usually we were doing adoptions on the violin concertos and things like that that we would adapt for marimba. So I'd get some violin players and some trumpet players to come in. And, it was close, it was right up the street, mm -hmm. you know, and I happened to know some of the people there, and so, you know, come on in and, um, you know, let's, let's, learn some, let's learn some new stuff. So it was just things that I did. I mean, when I was playing with shakarays and all the Latin percussion instruments and pans and this and that, I loved it and was always fascinated as a child and always watched how children react. I used to give these concerts, children concerts in schools all the time. And I'd bring just boxes of every gingong and flexitone. And the kids would go nuts. When you just pick something and go, Ooh, they go, ah, what was that? And you know, you teach them the name. This is called a kashishi. Can you say it? Kashishi. You know, and okay, here's how it works. Or we start doing it. Mm -hmm. And you pass them out. You see what I mean? Because kids like that. I mean, we're all fascinated with cymbals and triangles and tambourines, especially from all over the world, because there's all kinds of panderas and, you know, like everything else, all kind of great instruments and percussion instruments, and I was into it. And so we started having the kids, and some of the guys were 
also they played piano and violin, different guys, you know, and so, well, okay, we're going to play, do a violin piece at the cultural concert. So we did everything. Another thing, it was San Jose State. Ed Sabanovich, I believe that's his first name, and he was, he was the Afro-Cuban Brazilian Latin guy mm -hmm. over there. And Tony Cerrone was the percussion guy. I mean, Tony Cerrone. Legend. You know, so we got the hot classical. Fred and everybody in the whole SEV percussion program studied with him at San Jose State. Mm. Everybody. Rob Carson. You know, um, what was I talking about the other earlier today? Um, Alan Christensen. Yep. All of these guys, they all studied. So if you're doing percussion, you had to study with Ed Sabanovich too, which is hand drums and this and cymbals. And so actually uh, Santa Clara was kind of an extension of what was being taught at San Jose because everybody that was in that drum line practically all those years were studying with Tony Cerrone, including Fred Sanford. Bob Kalkoffin, who was the snare tech back then when I competed, everybody, yeah. all the kids, and that was part of it. And so we're going, we're going to extend this and have a, a samba school and everything and teach kids, you know, how to play some of these samba rhythms and this and that. And so it was, it was like a little percussion school. I saw, I saw last year a, uh, a photo, um, a, I think it was an SCV celebration maybe it was a hall of fame celebration because you're of course you are a distinguished member of the santa clara vanguard hall of fame yeah they let me in the door they let you in there they, they more than let you in there <laughs> but there's a nice photo that included some 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 of our our contemporaries including scott johnson but also tony was part of that celebration Tony Cerrone, and we were so happy yeah it was the almost, awards banquet almost a, a member of the family well he was i mean he's like i said he taught fred sanford me, Kurt Moore, Rob Carr, everybody, all the kids are in the drum line. We studied with them. Now, at that time, you know, probably orchestral guys weren't really renowned for loving drum corps. No. So and I and he, he pushed it off to a side enough, but he also knew that all of his best students were from drum corps. Yeah. So, so he dug it, you know what I mean? But it was still, the, your drum corps stuff's over here, and we need to do this. Mm hmm but he always liked it. I mean, but you know, he's the godfather. He was, for, for him to come to a, a banquet dinner and all of his students there were hanging out. I mean, it was just fabulous. Yeah, it was just amazing. Amazing. Yeah. amazing.